Ross might be out. Taken comfortably, and that's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Straight Bat with Devesh. I am back uh, with a new topic, new issues and today I am going to talk about uh, one uh, post on the social media about cricket. Uh, when I went through that post and uh, there were so many things, uh, it, it was talking about the selection problem. Uh, the other issues in cricket in Canada, but my attention was drawn because I saw a word of bullying and discrimination, um, which really shocked me. Uh, and but when I read it, it was about it was written by a father whose son is playing in Canada for last so many years. He started in uh, Canada when he was like 14 years old. Today he is like 20. He is adult. And that's why I invited him to understand uh, what is his point of view about this whole uh, incident. Uh, so let's welcome Mr. Arsalan Khan, who is also former captain of Under-19 uh, World Cup, and let's try to find out his perspective about the whole post. So welcome, Arsalan. Thank uh, you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. So there was a post. Right. Uh, which came out <coughs> and it was written by your father, Mr. Tahir Khan, who is uh, also your coach. coach. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there were so many things written over there and I can understand uh, it was also about the selection and other stuff, but I will not pick that up because right. in a system where I do not see there is a merit based system here anyway. So, and I have spoken, spoken so many times about that process. That's not good, uh, but my attention to that was uh, was that about bullying and the discriminations. And you have been playing into the system for last how many years? Six years now. Six years now. So you tell me your story first. That when you started and you started playing, what was your feeling on and off the field about the system? Uh, <coughs> well, playing since I was fourteen, you always felt like. <coughs> There wasn't a much of a relationship between the board and the players. Mm -hmm. It was more so like you get picked, you play, and then afterwards, after you played, it's it's done. You just mm -hmm. wait until the next tournament comes around. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like there was there was a lot of like lack of relationship between the board members and the players. Mm -hmm. And but growing up, I mean, as a teenager, you never really think about it that much. Mm -hmm. You're just focused on playing the game of cricket and just focusing on being out there with your friends, having fun. So okay. you don't really think about it, but it's more so when <coughs> you're off the field mm -hmm. and you have time to yourself, you start thinking about it, maybe maybe some things that you didn't catch on to at first, but then afterwards it starts making sense, mm -hmm. that you feel like maybe you were a target. So, okay, so elaborate on that. When you say that there should be more relationship between board right. and the players, what do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is like, I know a lot of the board members don't even know the na players' names, full names. Mm -hmm. They don't know who they are, probably not even by face. Mm -hmm. So there's no like, <coughs> what I mean by there's no relationship, it's like there's no understanding between the player mm -hmm. and the board. There's no understanding of what the player's wants and needs are. Mm -hmm. It's more so just. So that is one very important thing. And when you talk about the needs, needs means uh, the mental support right. and uh, your progress as a cricketer. So it was all the day, all the way you found it missing. Right. right. So, but in within this very system, right, you kept on playing, mm -hmm. uh, and there must be reason for that, right? Right. Uh, there must be some I initiative from or some incentive from the board you saw that you wanted to play, mm -hmm. or was it your own motivation or your coach motivation? I think it was personal motivation. Personal motivation. Yeah, so just there was no just a love motivation of the at all from the board as such. No, to play I don't for feel. Canada. I don't feel so. Okay, so that is missing. Right. Now tell me when you become a, in, within this very system, mm -hmm. end of the day you were uh, selected as a coach, uh, as a captain of the uh, under 19 team. Right. So how it, it was possible that the very system you are thinking was not supporting <coughs> you, you become a captain of the team? 
it was really tough to even become captain. Mm -hmm. I feel in 2016, we had a tour in Houston, mm -hmm. and I was captain of that. But <coughs> and then it was quite successful. We were 4-0. I mm -hmm. did quite well personally, mm -hmm. but more so like the team did. Team won the tournament, so that was that was a plus. But after that, I was dropped as captain mm -hmm. without even being informed. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if I should be dropped as caption, uh, captain, I should be given an explanation okay. as to why. Why? So there was no explanation. There was no explanation. It was just all of a sudden, and then I was also asked to help the the captain of the team mm -hmm. that was captaining at the time. And where, where? In Houston, you were the captain? Sorry, yeah. In Houston, I was the captain, but after there was a qualifying tournament for the mm -hmm. World Cup, mm -hmm. and for that, I was dropped as captain. Okay, so let's go back to the Houston tour, right? right. What was your uh, personal performance like? I was the leading run scorer in the tournament. Okay, and personally. how much, uh, what was your total run? Do you remember that? Oh, no, I don't. Oh, as a batsman, you should remember all of your runs. Yeah, I should. Okay, but anyway, so you were the top scorer, right. and who other teams were there? Uh, it was us, mm -hmm. USA and Bermuda. Canada, USA and Bermuda and you you end up with a leading scorer. Right. Um, and and you won that tournament. Yes, we did. For as a captain. For a so who was the coach that time? Uh, Kulbir, just well. Okay. So was there any feedback given to you once you came back from uh, the tournament? The who's Houston tour? No. Yeah, no. So you just came back and you and packed your bag, you went home right. and that's all. Yeah. So no future communication, how you want to, you know, pick you up and uh, progress you as a captain or as a batsman. No, Never. not really. Okay. So that was one of the case. Yeah. Okay. So what happened after that? So after the Houston tour, we were preparing for the qualifying tour for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. That was going to be held in uh, New Zealand in 2018. <coughs> Playing in that, I was dropped as captain, but I was also told to help the current captain. Mm -hmm. And personally, I felt insulted. Mm -hmm hearing that mm -hmm. because I feel like I did a great job captaining the, the tournament before. Mm. I know it's it's not in my right to be g captain. Mm. It's something that's given to you and it's mm. an honor. Mm. But I was just upset at the fact that I was dropped as captain and not given an explanation as to why. Mm. So you thought that at least if they were not making you the captain, they should have explained you why. Right. Okay. And that is, that is the case even today. They don't explain and give no. any explanation to the players. Okay. So, who was the captain in the next tour? For which tour, sorry? Uh, the ne after the after uh, Houston. The qual qualifying tour? Qualifying. Movindu was. Movindu was. So, yeah. Movindu was made captain. Right. And you were vice captain or? No, nothing? I was asked to be vice captain, but I you didn't. I declined. To, uh, why? I because you. I, I I just felt like it was an insult. Okay. Because <coughs> of insult. Okay. Okay. So, how was that tour? Uh, that tour went well. We actually won that we qualified for the World Cup after losing the first game to US we won the remainder games mm -hmm. and we beat USA in the finals as well so uh, when you uh, when the team won the qualifier right. which happened in Canada right yeah, uh, Toronto Toronto yeah. and uh, what was your performance there uh, I won two man of the match awards and I won the man of the tournament award as well oh you were the man of the tournament right yes so it just clearly shows that even though you felt insulted you didn't bring that feeling for the team's performance. You right. contributed for the teams. And then when I see that you become a captain of uh, Canada, uh, soon after or after a couple of tournaments more, right. it shows that they were watching you and your attitude. Yeah. And that's why they you know, gave you that benefit. Yeah. So, so far I see there is an issue that sometime they were making you a captain, taking you out without explanation, uh, which is system issue and I agree with that. But ultimately your good performance paid you off. Right. That's what you felt when you become a captain of uh, Canada? Yeah. I think regardless of being captain or not, you have a responsibility as a player to always do your best yeah. <coughs> and to make sure whatever you contribute helps the team win. Mm -hmm. So even though I was dropped as captain, I still always felt like I, I'm, I can still help win the, like help the team win the game mm -hmm. regardless of being captain or not okay so all along uh, when when i go back to the post your father wrote uh, do you relate this now because that time you were like young guy right. like 14 15 16 years old like but today when you look back and say okay maybe my father is right and i was getting discriminated all the way right uh, do you feel that way yeah so do you feel that way now okay so don't tell me uh, 
there was an incident of uh, bullying I heard and when I wrote when I read that post it was right. clearly mentioning about those bullying incidents and there was also a complaint. So, can you just jog back to your memory and say what happened that time and how uh, traumatic it was for you mentally as a player. Uh, so, this date back this dates back to I think 2017 <coughs> on a tour mm -hmm. to uh, St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I was bullied because our designated manager kept using derogatory terms against us, me personally. You personally. Yeah. Okay. He was using racial slurs and to me honestly it was very off-putting because mm -hmm. like cricket is a very long game mm -hmm. so you don't have, it's really tough to deal with a lot of mental issues and it's very easy for you to, to, to believe these comments that are being said against you even though if it's used as a joke or not. Mm. It can always be used ag against you, it can always feel like it's it very, very disturbing. Very disturbing, yeah, it's very like off-putting. Okay, so help us and help my uh, audience to understand how you coped uh, with those situations because you are you were all alone in that tour, right? Yeah. Uh, your parents was not there, nobody yeah. was there. So, how did you manage that? It was very disturbing, how did you? It, it, it was very disturbing but luckily I have a very like uh, supportive father who is also my coach. Mm -hmm. So, I would always just talk to him. I would I didn't really mention it to him at the time mm -hmm. that it happened mm -hmm. because I knew it would create a scene and I was just focusing on the game and trying to worry about my next game but mm -hmm. it was always nice to have my father to help me not uh, get my mind off things to cool off and he would always deal with all of my off field topics and he would always make sure that I'm just focused on playing and in the next game. And who was that guy who was giving you, abusing you? Our manager. Your manager, okay. So when that manager, the so called manager and I don't think they are educated enough or I don't know what is their education but regardless of their background, right. once they were hurling abuse and whatever which you calling as bullying, did you feel sad? Yeah. Did you feel sad? Of course, of course yeah. you feel sad because at the time I was very young, I think I was seven, 16, 17. Okay. So and you didn't understand what is going on, right? No, not really. I, at the time I thought maybe it was a joke. I took it as a joke but yeah. over time you could tell that those comments weren't necessary very did, did and it was okay. very abusive okay. if you look at it. Did it uh, affected your performance in any way? I, d I don't believe it did. I think it affected me mentally, mentally but I don't think it affected me performance wise because. So, you lost your confidence with, with the team with, with something like negativity in your mind? Yeah, I did. It, I, it was very off putting. I did feel like there was some sort of like negative vibes coming from yeah. the, not the team I would say but like when we are all together it was just very awkward at times. Yeah, because you know why I'm bringing this point because when you go to the school right. and you you hear about bullying, your teacher teach you right that what does bullying means right. And when you go to the field, when you play in the field, uh, when you see clearly these kind of thing, uh, why didn't you raise your voice? At the time, like I said, I I didn't really mean much of it. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was just worried about playing the next yeah. game and focusing. So you were on the just game. focusing on the play. Yeah. Let's finish this tournament right. and, and then do my best. maybe deal with it afterwards. Okay, so that shows your maturity that uh, still with those negativity you wanted to play. Right. And how was your performance at the end of the day? Like I was good. It was not bad. I don't remember personally my stats, but mm -hmm. we did quite well as a team. We gelled. We learned a lot in that tournament leading into the World Cup. Yeah, but it shows that after that tournament you were made captain, so it was should right. be good. Uh, so when you came back. What happened? From the St. Kitts tour? Yeah. Uh, then we just started preparing for the World Cup. Okay. So, was there any complaint or something? Uh, there, was, there was a complaint filed against the manager. Who who filed that? My complaint? father did because at the okay. time I wasn't old enough. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I left it with my father to deal with those issues. Okay. So, you were not adult. So, you said, yeah. told your father and your father took action. Yes. So, and what happened? Was that manager expelled? He was not expelled. Uh, I was given an apology, a written apology, mm. and a apology to my face. And mm. my father left it in good faith of Cricket Canada's hands to deal with it the way they seemed fit. Oh, so th perhaps there was an agreement where your father agreed that whatever Cricket Canada will decide should be in a good, good faith. Yeah, good faith, right? So here I wanted to bring a point that see, a parent is agreeing. Uh, signing an agreement that's why the guy who made this all abusive languages and everything uh, said sorry and fine 
but the question is that as an organization what is your responsibility why you re-inducted that manager even there was a charges against him and it is not that it was not proven he sent a uh, apology uh, uh, he you know apologize uh, written he gave, submitted a written apology it means that he admitted his mistake so the point is that how he was able to continue even after that so he was even uh, continuing after that as a manager right yeah he managed for the world cup and then uh, in the inaugural gt20 season hmm. both years he was my manager as well okay so everybody can find out who is that person because i don't want to bring the name um, but the question is the responsibility lies with cricket canada to manage their people if there is a stigma of bullying or discrimination against any manager or coach why that guy comes back into the system that is the question okay so now let's talk about your under 19 world cup you okay. went there canada finished 12th or 13th position 12th position right how was your feeling like there did that guy did the same mistake there as well or he was like okay no he was a lot more respectful on this respectful. tour knowing that yeah. there would be people mm -hmm. watching him and stuff okay but it was a good tour i mm -hmm. i felt like the boys mm -hmm. we gelled very well together mm -hmm. we played good cricket together mm -hmm. and another thing was that we supported each other very well over there so now uh, arslan you are an adult right uh, yeah. and when you look back and you you clearly see the things uh, from your thinking process and uh, now would you like to reopen the case and pursue that case for yes that? i would actually you would like yeah. you know, and why it is because i feel like since th the world cup i've been left out mm -hmm. i haven't been given much opportunities to play cricket mm -hmm. and with my stats and my i believe so like if i played for any other board or any other cricket board i'd be given a chance i'd be given the opportunity mm -hmm. i'd be backed up and i'd be supported which i believe i'm not being supported at the moment so you think that because of that complaint which your father did right uh, there was a kind of animosity against you yes okay but right. i have a different take on it but we'll discuss about it right. and that after the break see you after the break hello everyone uh, welcome back uh, from the break uh, so as you know we are talking to arslan khan and uh, we were talking about bullying and uh, discrimination in uh, cricket in canada uh, it is a very serious topic uh, you it may sound um, you know kind of uh, one of the incident but it is not it is a daily routine in canada that some players or some uh, player here and there gets bullied by their coach willingly or unwillingly so it is also an issue of education uh, overall it's not only the fault of cricket canada or one particular person there is a education problem as well uh, so regard to that let's continue our discussion and see what we can do further on this so aslan you were talking about that now you are an adult and you want to see that if there what are my legal options right so are you seriously looking at it and you are looking at different options you have available to you yeah i have been exploring my legal options um mm -hmm. and i think regardless of if i were selected or not selected i would still pursue this case mm -hmm. because i feel like i don't want any other player upcoming player to go through the same situations that i had to go through okay so i think it's best if i go through with this case and i yeah. do look at my legal options okay so my suggestion to you is that when you are looking at your legal options and other options do pursue it is your right to do that but i think you will also agree with me that it is also a cultural problem right a lot of people who comes from south asian <coughs> culture they don't understand the canadian values and sometimes misbehave thinking that it is normal in their own motherland but they fail to recognize the fact that it is not acceptable in canada right, right? so that could be on issue mm -hmm. but uh, still i would like you to continue with you with the case 
for the betterment of uh, uh, for future cricketers. Uh, not only that, there is also a responsibility of Cricket Canada to make sure if there is a complaint against any coach or mentor or manager, there should be a serious uh, action on that. It is not that okay, he is given an apology, that is fine, everything right. shrugged under the carpet, let us move on. No, it is not acceptable. As an organization, it is your responsibility to make sure that that guy never come back into the system for another 5 years at least. Okay. So, having said that, uh, now let us talk about your selection and it reminded me one thing. And I believe that it is my conviction that you have a talent right. and because of your talent, they are forced to bring you back. So, you were made under 19 captain, maybe there was they gave you 2 years break. Mm -hmm. If I look at from Cricket Canada perspective and then they wanted to see you grow and then induct into the senior team. Right. Because the problem here in cricket in Canada is that after under 19, there is no a bridge between how right. do you progress to the national team. Right. right. Uh, maybe they missed out and they do not have any merit based system. So, I totally agree with that. But then all of a sudden you were selected for the development team. Okay. Yeah. So, you were given a good fair chance there. So, tell me something about that tour. Uh, so, that tour was a development tour for the Canadian bunch. Uh, mm -hmm. Majority of the players haven't represented Canada before that. Mm -hmm. So, it was nice to see that there's new guys given a chance. Mm -hmm. to represent Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time we've ever played eight games mm -hmm. in a tournament. Mm -hmm. So, there was a lot of cricket, there was a lot of talent. And mm -hmm. It was a pretty decent tour. Yeah, And uh, I was watching your matches and all the matches in right. fact and I saw you scored 75 run against one of the best team. Right. Uh, you did pretty well. But before the tournament started, I heard that President was sending an email or text to everyone that what is expected out of batsman and the baller. And one of the criteria was that every batsman should be hitting in the gaps, Right. baller should be able to pitch at one particular position, at one particular area mm -hmm. if he is asked, being asked to. So, is it true? This kind of mail yeah, was circulated? We were, uh, as players, we were, as a group actually, we were given instructions. But it was very generic stuff, it was very like basic stuff to make okay. sure that we play basic cricket and good basic cricket. Okay, I understand the logic behind it, uh, but when you went to the tour and when you finished the tour, what was the feedback from the coach? Uh, there was very minimal feedback actually, but mm -hmm. there was feedback. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, maybe not the whole tournament's worth, mm -hmm. but we did get some feedback. Mm -hmm. Like personally, I got some feedback in regards to my batting, fielding. And what was that? Was it positive, negative? It was mostly positive, yeah. If mostly positive. Even from the coach and the president, we were given positive remarks. But Hang on, Ms. president also gave you the feedback? Yeah, the president also gave us feedback after the oh. tournament along with the coach. Mm -hmm. uh, it was generally positive mm -hmm. uh, because I think like it was the best that we've ever done as a Canadian team in the mm -hmm. regional tournament. Mm -hmm. So, it had to be positive remarks and there was a few, I wouldn't say negative, but just a few comments on how to improve your game, mm -hmm. what to work on. Mm -hmm few, but yeah. was there any f uh, follow up after that? No, after that tour there was no follow up. So, you were left on your own. Yeah. So, they give you the feedback, go and practice. Right. So, there is no continuity after that. No, right? there okay. was not. So, that is one other problem, uh, because the whole meaning of development is yeah. failed, if you fail to continue on your last performance. I think being from Ontario, it is <coughs> a lot easier for me, because there is a lot more training facilities here. But yeah. For a lot of the guys that were on that team, they went back to doing nothing. But tell me, what is the motivation to do that? There is none. None. Okay. So, coming back to the tour, right? right. Uh, you you were playing pretty well, and then you got injured, right? So that's that's not the fault of Cricket Canada. No. So and then your performance was not up to mark. You will also accept. Yeah. So why that happened? Uh, so. The the game that I got injured, mm. after that game I wasn't 100% mm -hmm. and I, I never really had the chance to become 100% because we had a physio who was a local physio but we weren't given the physio on off days, it was only during game days. What? Yeah, so, so the, 
for someone who's injured, the, be the best time to get treatment is on the off days when you're off not days, playing, yes. so you can co become better for the game. Yeah. But that wasn't given to us, so what I would do is I would do, I would try to do what I can myself to make myself better. Mm -hmm. But that didn't do much. And then on game days when we would go, there would already be a lineup of players that already want to get treatment from the physio. And my problem starts here. When I see that not enough uh, facility is given to the players on the tour, and there are numerous examples where players were not treated well, but there is enough money for a president to fly for one night to St. Kitts. I don't know why he flied just for one day. What was the cost? Maybe somebody should audit and find it out. It should be more than what injured player like Arslan needed. So that is the issue. You do not know how to spend your money. You know, the priority should be set. That's the point. But anyway, so Aslan, you will accept that you failed to capitalize on yeah. that tour, right? But still, I'm I still think there's a lot of, okay. Yeah. So, somehow I'm feeling that you are distraught and you are very alienated from the system. Uh, but have you lost all the hopes? No, I haven't. Um, I'm still practicing. I'm still backing myself whenever I get a chance. Good. I just feel like under these circumstances, I don't think I'm going to get selected. Okay. But that doesn't mean I'm disheartened. I'm still so, under the circumstances because of your dad's post or before that? I think under the circumstances that I'm, I'm the, the board members just are not pleased with me. They don't like me. Yeah. You feel that way? I do feel that okay. way. Okay. So, I think it is a responsibility of the board to get connected with the players not only Arslan, there are other players as well who are feeling the same way Arslan is feeling. And I am not saying that you should select, go and select Arslan next day, no. What I am saying is that there should be a connectivity uh, with uh, more sympathy. You need to understand that players put their 100%, uh, their parents are putting in the money. So, there is an emotional investment, there is an economical investment. All you need to do is when you are not willing to pay money to the players, although you have a 1 million surplus, to at least do some chatting with them on the regular basis. And when you make a development programs, there should be a continuity plan after that. Otherwise, do not fool the people around. So, with that, uh, I would like to say thank you very much. But we have another guest from Alberta and I am going to talk about uh, of a, a struggle uh, within that Alberta state about um, about two association fight and it is really affecting the young player there. So, let me come back after the break and continue talking to that other guest. Natural sweetener, flavor all. 20 flavors to choose from. The perfect substitute for sugar and artificial sweeteners. Flavor all by Greenish. Flavor all from Greenish. Now available at Rexall Pharmacies. Hello everyone, welcome back to my last segment. And as I said that I am going to talk about an issue going on in Alberta cricket um, and it is really affecting a lot of uh, good players there. So, it is a high time that we should speak about it and uh, let us try to understand what is going on there. Right. Uh, so, th in that regard I have uh, invited uh, the secretary of ACC uh, Mr. Sabaj um, who is with us on the phone. Um, and we are going to talk about the issue, the background and how, what is the road map to res, uh, you know, resolve the issue. So, Savaj, welcome uh, to my show, State Bat with Devesh. Thank you, sir, for inviting us. Yep. So, uh, how do, first I would like to know, how do you come to know about my program because I am so far away from Alberta. Um, sir, honestly, uh, we see your posts and your program on uh, Facebook and on YouTube all the time because uh, I think in most cases you are generally speaking with uh, about cricket.
cricket at a national level. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, when it comes to cricket at a national level, whether we are in Alberta or in BC or in Toronto or Ontario, um, it's, uh, it, you know, for uh, all of us, the love of the game is common. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of us want to move forward uh, and bring, you know, glory to the sport in, in Canada. So the work you're doing uh, has been crucial in bringing uh, light to, you know, factors that are affecting uh, cricket as, as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we follow you. Uh, we respect the work that you're doing, absolutely. And uh, that's why we wanted to bring this on your platform mm-hmm. uh, so that it reaches everybody across the country. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Savaj. Um, so let's get, get back to the issue. Um, so give us some background. What happened? Why there is a fight going between uh, two organizations in Alberta? Okay. Um, historically speaking, uh, let's start with the fact that there used to be only one association in Alberta, right? Mm-hmm. So this was the Alberta Cricket Association, the ACA, mm-hmm. uh, that has been the provincial cricket association in the province since the 70s mm-hmm. um, they have been a member of cricket canada as the provincial uh, sports organization since that time mm-hmm. which means that they are um, they have they have the mandate to represent all cricketers in alberta as well as uh, to be able to you know bring uh, points across related to cricket in alberta at the Cricket Canada level at their meetings, mm-hmm. at their AGMs and their other, you know, SAGMs and all those other meetings as well. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, what had happened was that over time, mm-hmm. um, there was a change within the management of ACA mm-hmm. that led to certain issues coming to light. Mm-hmm. Um, back in 2017, um, the, the now current president, he was elected to be the president of Alberta Cricket Association. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, um, the, there were issues related to, um, you know, the, the, this gentleman had come from being the president of Calgary Cricket Association, and then he he from there he became the president of Alberta Cricket Association, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so. The members of Calgary, after he departed from the city, found certain irregularities, you can say, in uh, like dealings when it came to finances as well as other things. Uh, and they, w- when they found that out, they took them to you know the the, the police and uh, everywhere else. And that's all ongoing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're not going to get into too, too much detail of that because, you know, it's, it's got uh, certain names in there and I don't want to, you know, drag them through the mud at this point. But uh, in reality, you know, the, the situation was quite dire. Mm. Um, the Calgary uh, Association members shared that information amongst all the other leagues within the province mm-hmm. uh, that included like Edmonton, Port McMurray, uh, Grand Prairie. Uh, Red Deer, Lethbridge, all of them were, uh, um, you know, were brought, they brought them all on the same page. And the decision was made by all the members mm-hmm. that at the uh, at the 2018 AGM of, uh, uh, sorry, the 2017 AGM of uh, Alberta Cricket, which was held on October 28th, uh, the members decided that they're going to, uh, you know, put in a motion mm-hmm. to basically expel this individual from Alberta Cricket. Mm-hmm. Um, so all members are on the same page. Uh, we all, um, you know, so th- the first thing that he did to protect himself was that he knew that he had issues with Calgary and Calgary was the one that had all the proof and everything. Um, so every year, historically, whenever an AGM was held, it was always held in Red Deer because Red Deer was uh, technically in the middle of Calgary and um, you know Edmonton. So mm-hmm. everybody from Calgary, Edmonton, Fort Park, everybody could you know get together and represent their associations at the AGM. Uh, so the first thing he did was instead of holding the meeting in Red Deer, he held the meeting at 9 a.m. in Edmonton, uh, thinking that hey, it's a three and a half hour drive from Calgary. Nobody from Calgary will be able to make it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know we were determined. 
that you know we want to we want to fix this issue so everybody was there 9 a.m we all showed up at the hotel where the meeting was held and for the first time at a provincial meeting uh we saw security guards at the door hmm. so it's a general meeting we never had this in the past that you know there's security at the door that is allowing only certain individuals to mm. enter the mm. meeting mm. uh and they're like they're trying to make sure that nobody from calgary can enter the meeting uh, even though we are all members uh, but they are like oh no no this is a closed closed door meeting and you're not allowed and there was a whole ruckus the the the, the edmonton police showed up uh, they went through the bylaws they looked at everything and they finally said no like these people should be allowed to be uh, in the room and the meeting should go on okay uh, so when the meeting meeting started he knew that okay you know these guys are going to bring about the the motion soon uh, and they're going to like uh, to force me to vote on this motion to expel uh, so what does he do he he sneaks out of the meeting he mm-hmm. says i'm taking a 5 minute break uh, and uh, he leaves the room and we find out 5 minutes later that he's actually left the building mm-hmm. and he told the hotel staff that i cancel the meeting get everybody out of here so so was that recorded in the agm minutes of meeting this all yes, so that is all in the minutes of that meeting that were shared after the fact by the members with uh, cricket canada as well and the reason of cancellation was given there in that no, minutes no reason of cancellation he never so he never issued the minutes of that meeting uh, mm-hmm. the members did it after the fact themselves mm mm-hmm. mhm um because basically what happened was he left the meeting but the vice president of cricket uh, alberta at that time uh, his name is nadeem and he was still there mm. right so as for the bylaws if the president is not available uh, the vice president chairs the meeting mm-hmm. right so we decided like all the members because there was like uh, almost 100 people there from all over the province who wanted to, the meeting to continue uh, but because he had gone to the hotel and said i'm canceling the meeting uh, nobody get everybody out okay. we uh, moved the meeting to victoria park uh, mm. which is edmonton's main uh, ground and that's where their pavilion and everything is mm. uh, and the vice president nadeem he presided over the meeting the agm continued uh, there was a motion put forth mm. uh, to basically expel mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know the president from the alberta cricket all together mm-hmm. uh, it was unanimously passed Mhm. Uh we got everybody to sign off on it. We have a attendance sheet for the meeting showing that there was a majority of clubs from Alberta president uh, present at that meeting. They all put the motion in and everything was approved and uh you know there was a decision made. So right? that that the decision and whatever was there is there as a proof with you. Yes so we have the meeting minutes we have the attendance sheet of the meeting that shows all the different members from all the different cities uh they it's got signatures on it mm-hmm. uh, and all of this was shared uh with cricket canada mm-hmm. right after the meeting so okay. we we put everything together uh we sent it to cricket canada we told them that uh you know dear cricket canada uh we had some issues when when it came to management of cricket in alberta uh the members all got together and at the agm so, they voted to expel okay so what i'm understanding and i don't know i was not there so i cannot say who is oh. right or wrong but whatever i'm hearing from you there was a unanimous decision to expel the president that time uh-huh. and it was all written in the minutes of meeting the decision uh-huh. was done there's a proof for that and you send that proof to the alberta cricket association send that proof to the cricket uh, canada mm-hmm. and what That's was the res- what was the response from cricket canada that time um so oh, i'm just trying to understand first we didn't even get a response Mm-hmm. So they completely ignored it for a while. When we, you know, kept us telling them about it, they basically said that, "Oh, um it's an Alberta issue, go deal with it yourself." Hmm. Right? And our, you know, it's it's historically proven hmm. uh that, you know, Cricket Canada has a habit of doing this. Uh 
Mm -hmm. uh, a very similar situation happened in Saskatchewan back in 2012-13, mm -hmm. somewhere around that time where the Saskatchewan Cricket Association expelled the president mm -hmm. uh, of that association mm -hmm. and Cricket Canada ignored that decision by the members and continued to use the same person mm -hmm. as a representative of the, of the, of the province. No, but regardless of what Cricket Canada thinks and decides, what is the bylaw says? So, as for the bylaws, once the members vote to expel, the mm. person is no longer a member. The person is no longer a member, right? But Cricket Association is still there. Yes, okay. the association is still there. The members are still there. There is still a vice president there. Okay, uh, so everything is there. No, I, we got the point. So, so since then it is about 2017 you are talking, right? Yes, late 2017. So, now it is almost three years. So, uh -huh. is, is, do you see any light end of the tunnel? Is something happening <laughs> no, or we are still… Not at the moment. Because uh, you see so the problem here, I Sabaj, I see that yes, there is what from neutral point of view when I see it, I see okay, there is a problem and uh, two association is fighting in a state right and uh, I will accept that you have the majority. The other party will say okay we have the majority that fight is going on but the reality is that whoever is the majority should be able to prove it and as per the reality on the ground by looking at the uh, at the proof Cricket Canada should be able to resolve that right and it is betterment for the cricket in Alberta as a whole. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely no. I mean, uh, we we that's exactly what we've been fighting over with mm -hmm. Cricket Canada back in. So after this happened, like he, uh, you know, the dates because he still had access to like all the Cricket uh, Alberta emails and email addresses and everything like that. Uh, he went back to one of the associations in the province and he made a like a deal with them, right? Mm -hmm. um, the deal basically was that uh, you guys. Uh, come back and join me and recognize me again as the president and I will get you favor with Cricket Canada where you know you guys will get representation, well, so well, national teams, all that kind of stuff, right? No, I agree but you see I cannot, I don't know uh, yeah. unless no, I no, contact no, no, the other party I cannot confirm that what is the reality but no. for me the reality is there is a few, uh, struggle and fight going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And oh. ultimately, it is affecting the future of the uh, budding cricketer in Alberta. So, oh. from my perspective, it should be resolved. Uh, what, why I invited you on this program to understand that yes, there is an issue. Let's identify there is an issue, oh. Oh. and who is right, who is wrong is a different. Uh, it is Cricket Canada to decide. Uh, first, oh. you among self in Alberta should say, okay, this is the unanimous decision which you guys as you are saying already did it, but uh -huh. why Cricket Canada, you think that Cricket Canada is not resolving this issue? Because so, if you want to go into the why, um, like what we believe why um, hmm. is because uh, Alberta historically had four votes at every Cricket Canada general meeting, right? Hmm. And this was based on 75 teams so 75 or more teams if you have those mm. you get four votes uh, at the general meeting so this mm. is voting to pass anything vote people in elections everything Alberta had four votes mm. now what happened is that with this divide mm. in all reality of the situation mm. uh, neither you know, now we have a new association. So all these, you know, associations that had issues with Alberta Cricket Association (ACA), they got together and they formed the ACC, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm a part of, mm -hmm. right? So we have basically Calgary, Fort McMurray, Grand Prairie, Lethbridge, all of them together, mm -hmm. and we have our own association. We formed a separate association, and we said, "Hey, Cricket Canada." We have the majority, we have more teams, we are geographically more spread out, we mm. have, uh, you know, everything that you need to show that we, uh, you know, we should be the provincial uh, association, right? So, Not as you said, there. as you said, the voting factor could be a reason why Cricket Canada is not resolving that issue? Absolutely, it is a factor because mm -hmm. after we gave them all the proof mm -hmm. uh, at the, you know before the last year's AGM of Cricket Canada, 2019 AGM of Cricket Canada, 
Mm. We sent to Cricket Canada all the proof showing them that we had more teams, mm. we had more associations, mm. and that ACA at that point only had one member league, mm. and that member league had less than 50 teams. Mm. So first of all, ACA should have only, like, even if you recognize ACA as the member, mm. they should only have two votes. Okay. Right? So here is the point. Um, if you dig out your some of the interview given by uh, cricket board president, Mr. Ranjit Saini, uh -huh. last year, he was very clear that, and it is it is a law in Canada. Nobody can be proven uh, can be said as a guilty unless proven guilty, right? Uh -huh. So that is a beside the point. The point is here for me is anybody who is like authentic, right? If they are saying I have the majority of tournaments and the players with me, there should be a ground permit. Absolutely. Unless you have the ground with you, you cannot organize uh -huh. the tournament the cricket. right mm -hmm. so the point is that is it that difficult for create canada to look at the proof of the ground permits and decide who is standing where uh, it's not a matter of difficulty it's a matter of having uh, Intent. the resolve and actually having you know doing it okay. right and ha wanting to do it oh okay so I don't know because I do not have um, other parties, so I cannot say who is right and wrong in that regard. Uh, but all I want to bring uh, forward the point is that uh, the struggle within Alberta should be resolved as soon as possible, Absolutely. and it's not. And whoever is made a president, I'm fine with that. Even this person or that person, I have nothing to say in that. Right? Uh, so, if there is a case or not case, that is not the point. The point is, is there intent? within Cricket Canada to resolve that issue. If there is an intent, it should have been resolved in three years time. Three years of time is a long time. It is a long time. Yeah. And uh, honestly speaking, like, I mean, when we talked to Cricket Canada and they, they came to us last year and they said, how about we do arbitration mm. a, in Alberta? Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, we said, okay, yeah, that's, that's a great idea, right? We are we are more than willing to participate in that arbitration. This at first they said, "Go find an arbitrator and do it yourself." We're like, no, that's not going to be. That's not uh, the right way. Mm. You need to get involved. Mm. You need to uh, bring an arbitrator, mm. and we will give our proof. Mm -hmm. The other party can give their proof, mm. and let the arbitrator decide. And we are okay with it if the arbitrator decides against us. Mm -hmm. Right, and if they say you guys are wrong, mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, you, what you're saying is a lie or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then at least you know we will accept it. We're okay. willing to accept it, and we're willing to put that in writing that we are willing to accept any decision that comes out of the arbitration, mm -hmm. as long as and our uh, you know our requirements have always been simple. Mm -hmm. The arbitrator has to be a third party, mm -hmm. right? Has to be a registered arbitrator in. Alberta or at the national level, mm -hmm. right? And that Cricket Canada needs to put it in writing that whatever the decision of the arbitration is, they will ensure that that decision is followed through with. Okay, because I was about to ask you the question if Cricket Canada asked you to come midway, was are you guys are willing to do that? And you already answered that, that this is your solution, that put an arbitrator in between and <coughs> get it resolved as soon as possible. It doesn't matter which way the decision goes. Yeah, and yeah. we are more than willing to take the, like, you know, one of the biggest complaints that ACA does is, and whenever they, you're going to talk to them, they're going to say, well, Calgary and Fort McMurray owes money to ACA, and that's why they're, you know, doing all of this. Right? You that's are, always a justification that they give. And we have basically said that, hey, you know, let the arbitrator decide. If the arbitrator says that we owe you money, whether it's Twenty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. Whatever the arbitrator decides, you are ready to pay. We we are ready to pay that amount. Okay. As long as there, it's a justified amount, mm. and all we're saying is, bring the arbitrator, let them make the decision. Let the arbitrator hold, uh, you know, under the eye of the arbitrator, yes. we'll hold new elections. Whoever is elected president, vice president, we are willing to accept it. Okay. So, uh, Savaj, uh, we are running out of the time, but uh, thank you very much. You really gave us a very uh, good insight what is going on. And I hope uh, that sooner than later, uh, uh, good, sense so too, good sense prevail. Good sense prevail. And uh, 
for the betterment of cricket in Canada to refute to negate all the confusion uh, Cricket Canada take it further and resolve the issue as soon as possible. That is all I can hope um, and uh, I can wish all of you in Alberta best of luck and uh, be a man to accept whatever decision the arbitrator takes. Okay? Absolutely. Because it's better, it is better, it is about the future of players, right? So, let's, let's get it players, resolved, sir. okay? And yes. thank you very much for joining us and giving us the insight. Um, Anytime. And uh, yes, we will continue to bring the issues. It is not to say who is right or wrong. It is about highlighting the issues. So, please be aware there is a problem in cr Alberta, uh, uh, cricket in uh, Alberta and it is our responsibility as a stakeholder of cricket that we should resolve it. Thank you, Savaj. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, as you know, uh, we highlighted the issues we have in Alberta and we need to first accept there is an issue. Unless we accept there is an issue, we are never going to resolve it, right? So, that is why I wanted to bring the issues, not to judge who is right or wrong. There could be one party who is going to be right, not everybody could be right, right? Or maybe everyone is right. So, with that, uh, we would like to ask a last question to Arslan, our young gun and uh, say, so Arslan, what do you think uh, and going forward, what is your uh, action item? Uh, well, firstly, I would like First to of all, I would like to know, are you retiring? Uh, no, I am not retiring. Okay. okay. No. no. Okay. Uh, what I would like to say is that I am happy to see people from Alberta are approaching you, asking you or uh, coming to your show and having a talk and addressing these issues and mm -hmm. I, <coughs> the last thing I would like to say is if there are any other players that do feel like they are being discriminated or bullied, this is a good platform to come and raise your voice and then you should come on the show and you should speak out, you should raise your voice and you should make sure that you are heard because you won't be, if you stay quiet you are not going to be heard but if you come out and say something then your voice will be heard definitely. Okay. So. And I would like to also request you, Aslan, uh, that I am planning to do an education seminar on bullying and discriminations in sports in Canada. Right. Uh, would you like to participate in of that? Of course, yeah. Okay. Thank <coughs> you very much. So, so very soon you will uh, hear from my uh, Facebook uh, post that I am going to organize a seminar on this topic because this is also about education. Uh, it is not about only the problem of Cricket Canada we should also contribute from our perspective to educate people uh, what does this bullying means because many of us who comes from uh, South Asian uh, region may not understand what is the bullying in Canadian values and terms, right. Uh, so, we should be aware of that, uh, that there is a sensitivity level is different in Canada. So, we should be aware of that and act our, uh, take our action accordingly. So, thank you very much for joining me in a state bad with Devesh. I will come to the next episode with a different topic with a different issues. Thank you very much. This might be out. Taken comfortably. That's a good catch in the deep. But run needed. This might run away to the boundary.